Hi everybody, I'm Eric Trombley from the Engineering Teaching and Learning Team and this is another video in the Remote Teaching 101 series. This time I'm going to give a quick overview of labs and tutorials. What can that look like in a remote teaching sense? By the end of this video, you'll have a better understanding of some of the approaches that you can consider and of course who you can network with to continue the conversation. Alright, let's do this. Okay, right here on this first slide, I just want to highlight the contribution of two individuals, Dina Salem and Hashan Fernando. They're both members of the Engineering Teaching and Learning Team, and they have advanced degrees in engineering, and they are the folks that we're involving most directly in conversations around labs. It doesn't matter what department or what program you're in, definitely coordinate with Dina and Hashan about what remote teaching can do to your labs. Now, I'm just going to give you a quick set of ideas here. So first of all, a lot of people are going towards this idea of looking at what's already in the market. What virtual labs or simulations are already present in an open educational resource or by a vendor? Of course, the Faculty of Engineering and Applied Science is signing a deal with this Kwanzer vendor. They provide virtualized learning objects for robotics and control systems, but there are other fields as well. Other vendors like Labster, the FET, other ones out there, certainly anything that you can find that's an open educational resource that might be able to virtualize an element of your lab or simulate an element of your lab is a real win. Another approach that a lot of people are gravitating towards is let's make a high quality video demonstration of the lab and then we'll ask the students to watch that and then we'll provide them some real life noisy data sets to interpret after the fact. They can still do a lab report in this fashion and also we're investigating some very novel approaches where we would actually do instead of a video demonstration that is let's say recorded we could possibly do one live so stay tuned. And you can also take an approach where you could assemble a hardware kit and you can ship it to students. So we've had some good success in the past with using Arduino kits, sending those to students and then having them use that microcontroller and the associated parts with it to do experiments in a home setting. Okay, of course you have a safety issue to consider here, but in the case of the Arduino example, that's very controllable. In addition to labs, you also have to think about tutorials. So Josh Woods had a very fantastic quote that he passed around to the dean recently, and I thought I would share it with you. And before I do, I just want to tell you, this is a technique you can use in your videos. Tell the students to actually pause the video. So I'm going to put the quote on in a moment, and I want you to pause the video, and I want you to read the quote, okay? Go ahead, pause the video now. Okay, hopefully you actually did pause the video and you have enough time to go through that quote so you can get a sense. What Josh is describing here is very accomplishable, right? You can definitely use a Zoom mediated tutorial to answer questions and equipped with a tablet device, you can do mathematics or sketching right on the fly. So it's very, very accomplishable. I'm going to show you a couple of workflows that enhance what Josh is talking about. Okay, the first one here is this idea where let's say you had a situation where you're going to conduct a lab, a tutorial, or perhaps a coding studio, and you're going to have multiple TAs in the session, and uh, let's pretend it's individual work to start with. And you can leverage Zoom breakout rooms for this. So you could select a breakout room called A, B, and C, for example, and then you could ask all the students to arrive into room A. And this is the way that you could organize it when you're doing individual work. You'd bring forward your, t your teaching team. So up here in the top left corner, let's pretend these are the TAs. So everyone would be working on uh, their work. And if someone had a given question, they could get the attention of a TA. And then the TA and the student could then break out into another room. So now Santa can have time with the TA where they could share their screen, they could look at each other's work, they could guide each other in one-on-one -on -one way towards finding a solution. If this TA was busy with Santa, for example, and another question came in the class, and well, nothing is precluding the second TA from breaking out into another Zoom breakout room and using this kind of methodology all the way through. So this is useful. Uh, the technical limitation is actually 50 so five zero Zoom breakout rooms, so it's very accomplishable for tutorials that are even large in size. Okay, what if we change the idea now? What if it was group work? Okay, I've highlighted this, this word group. It's still multiple TAs, but now it's group work. How do we use Zoom breakout rooms for that? Well, I'll just take the class and I'll split them in groups of four. And then I'll bring back the teaching team. 
So these are the TAs. So TA number one might just start in room number A, for example, and TA number two might start in room B. And of course, this is where you engage in a small group discussion. You check in on the group, you make sure they're on the right track, etc. And then once this discussion was done, this TA could actually move. You know, you could move from room B over to room C, uh, you know, rotate basically, just like you would in a physical space where you'd go across the room. While that TA moves to room C, certainly uh, the other TA would then rotate as well. So the TAs could just rotate around the room like that. Now, what would happen if a TA was busy in another room and let's say Santa, let's pick on Santa for a second. Let's say Santa, he's full of questions and he immediately has a question. There's no TA in this room. Well, Santa can use the Zoom chat to get the attention of a TA somewhere else and the first one of these two that finishes could return back and talk to Santa. So there's one example of how you can use Zoom breakout rooms, multiple TAs, and we're building out instructions and special TA training packages that'll help TAs understand how to go through this process. So there you have it. There's my quick video on labs and tutorials. And again, I'd like to invite you to engage with Dina and Hishan. They're gonna be able to help you brainstorm what remote labs can look like in your course. Okay, thank you very much.